on our show. Now, first, domestic violence. It's a problem society has been aware of for a long time, but maybe we haven't really understood the depth of it until it became an issue for the country's most popular sport. Now, more and more cases have come to light in the NFL, and communities are taking a harder look at the problem within its own homes and neighborhoods. Now, joining me right now to talk about the situation in South Asian communities and what's being done about it is the board president for My Tree, Sonia Palea, and the board secretary, Abba Singbi. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for having us. It is a pleasure. Now, tell us, first of all, a little bit about your organization and how it got started. So um, it was started in 1991 by a group of four women. And they started uh, getting um, calls from the community and the mainstream saying, oh, there's an Indian woman or a Pakistani woman who's having problems of domestic violence. Perhaps you're from the same community. You can help her. And when they tried to connect the women to mainstream services, they found there were a lot of gaps that were not being served by the mainstream agencies for immigrant mm -hmm. women. And so in 1991, February, they incorporated as a nonprofit called Maitri, which means friendship in many, many South Asian languages. And since then, starting from um, you know, a little uh, one of those um, physical phone messaging systems, yes to now we have an organization that is, uh, we have a nine bedroom transitional home, we have a hotline. Uh, we have received over 30,000 phone calls in, since we started. Uh, we have 10 staff and uh, we have a large budget. A lot of demand out there then, huh? Yes, and as uh, we have gone more and more into the community and done more and more outreach, um, we don't think that domestic violence has increased, but awareness mm -hmm. and um, the community change in being willing to talk about these issues which were previously considered to be staying within the home, not to bring shame on the family, not to um, impact the rest of your extended family. Um, there's a huge sea change in the South Asian community. So we get a lot of calls from women and men sometimes and elders uh, where they're trying to find out their options rather than calling us after the situation has gotten out of control or the police is involved or they are homeless, uh, things like that. Where did you see that kind of change, that kind of awareness come about? Is it because they knew now there's a service out there that can help us or what made people suddenly start treating the situation differently than they did before? I think it's several things. One is that the outreach we did and we said you know nobody deserves to be abused and no matter what uh, a situation is between a partner and uh, two partners there has to be there are options available violence abuse um, verbal abuse emotional abuse any of these are not justified and I think we have done so much grass, grassroots education that there was part of this change the other thing is, I think, as the South Asian community has assimilated into the mainstream mm -hmm. and have experienced what is happening in the mainstream, I think they have also seen that, you know, there is help out there, mm -hmm. right? There is a lot of education in the mainstream agencies. There is, um, when you look at TV, you look, these are issues of the day. So I think that the South Asian community has begun to change. You know, from when we initially would go out, people would say, oh, you are homebreakers or you're out there to get us divorced. Or now people come and say, oh, you helped my cousin or my friend's wife or, you know, somebody I know was helped and you're doing a great job. Now, a lot of times when we say community, we are actually talking about a lot of communities within the community. That and of correct. course, that's certainly the case here. Uh, are there any problems in terms of the different kind of cultures, different kind of communities in terms of language or cultures or differences in attitude? You know, the thing is that it's maybe not an attitude as, as much as the resources they need. A lot of the women who call us who have who are very, um, you know, educated maybe, they're assimilated, they need a shorter time of help from us. But the clients who stay with us for a longer time are monolingual maybe, uh, you know, they need translation services, they need assistance with the judiciary, they, they don't, they're not assimilated into the life here. So the clients who really stay with us for a really extended period of time, which is very different from the mainstream um, agencies similar to us, is the clients who need help, they may not know how to take a bus, they don't know how to open a bank account and so the, these clients these women um, they need a lot more extended support than the mainstream agencies can provide I can see you know well one of the things is that a lot, I heard a lot about the boutique mm -hmm. even almost before I heard about the agency it's kind of well known uh, tell us a little bit about this boutique and not only in terms of what it does but what it's designed to do 
So that's the latest program of Maitri and uh, primarily two issues is what it is uh, supporting two programs at Maitri. One is the outreach program, getting the community involved because it is a community issue and if you're going to address this, we need the community involved in it, taking a stand in it. But, so it is a safe space for people to talk, it's a fun place and they, where they can talk about it, learn about a very serious issue that's there. It's an, otherwise, it's an intense issue. How so about the economic mindset. empowerment programs? So that's the second uh, reason that is there. So all net proceeds from this project go towards supporting the economic empowerment project. What are some three. of the things that it tries to do in terms of within the community? So within the community, as far as involving the community, a lot of people who are walking into the boutique, they really don't know about my three. So it starts informing them that we exist about domestic violence as such. And also in addition to that, there are a lot of people who want to do something, but they don't know what to do, where to do. And they don't want to get, they don't have either the bandwidth or the resources to get involved and do something very intense. But coming for two hours and doing something and volunteering, it's a feel good and they start getting engaged. Sonia Abba, thank you very much for being here to talk about that. It was our pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. And for more information